Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Okami, or Okami, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. But anyway, I've never actually played this game, and I've wanted to for ages. So I decided what better way to do it than to play it on the channel. So let's just hop straight in. I have got a save game where I was just checking that it was working properly. You know how it is, I've got to make sure I can actually record this, otherwise there's not much point even bothering trying, is there? Ooh, story time. Story. He... He... Uh, Hideki Kamiya... I'm sorry, I can't read that properly. Where are we? Some sort of town? Long, long ago. A tiny hamlet known as Kamiki lay nestled in a grove of proud and beautiful cherry blossoms. Each and every tree around the quiet burg was honoured as a god. However, the village was not without its dark secrets. Oh dear. To satiate the appetite of Orochi, Orochi, a fearsome qua cave deli dwelling did them for the beast. A young maiden was offered as a sacrifice at the annual festival. With a body like a mountain and eight heads mounted on necks the size of tree trunks, its blood red eyes alone were said to curse anyone who gazed into them. No one dared disobey the horrific beast. When the night of the sacrifice drew near, a mysterious white wolf appeared outside the village. This wolf, its coat as brilliant as snow, was dubbed Shirinae, Shirinui, Shirinui, she yes, the wolf kept a watchful eye on anyone who ventured outside the village and made a habit of patrolling the streets at night. People assumed the wolf to be a familiar of Orochi. As in, a, like a friend, or are we talking like a witch's familiar? Which I don't really understand the law behind. One villager took it upon himself to face the fearsome Shirinui, Shirinui, no, Shirinui. The warrior Nagi attempted many times to challenge the wolf, but his attempts were thwarted by Shirinui, the swift movements. Before long, the night of the accursed festival had arrived. A white plumed arrow hel heralded the coming sacrifice. Piercing the sky, the arrow sunk its shaft squarely into... <laughs> nice. The home of Nami, the villagers, the villagers' most beautiful maiden. Nagi, harboring a secret life for Nami, was enraged by this scene. Determined to put an end to Uruchi once and for all, Nagi travelled to the beast's cave in place of his beloved. The moon cave, a place as dark as evil itself, served as Uruchi's home. As Nagi stood bravely before the entrance, a beast appeared, eyes glowing crimson upon eight thrashing necks. Uruchi stood tall before him, anxious for another sacrifice. Nagi leapt with incredible grace, swinging his blade valiantly. On and on he sliced well into the moonless night. But Uruchi's hide was like steel. The blade left nary a scratch. At long last, Nagi, his energy spent from the intense battle, dropped to his knees, fatigued and gasping for breath. He knew he was staring death in the face. 
It was then that the wolf appeared. As if to protect Negi, it stood its ground before Orochi. In the darkness of the cave, the wolf's coat shone brilliantly. Alas, it was Shin Shin in the wolf that dwelled outside the village, bearing its fizzle clothes. Shin in leapt towards Orochi. Orochi reared its terrifying heads, readying its fangs for battle. The two beasts struggled wildly, thrashing in the darkness. Mysterious and terrifying, the spectacle continued. Shirininimenine summoned gusts of divine wind to counter Uruchi's flames. Ooh, fancy. As Uruchi closed in on Shirininimenine, sharpened claws glistening. A gigantic tree suddenly spurted forth, shielding the wolf. Shirinidibu fought gallantly to gain the upper hand. However, Orochi, protected by a mystical power, was not easily bested. Shirinidibu, the bear, covered in gashes, majestic coat dyed crimson, stood exhausted before the mighty Orochi. Come on, Wolfie! Who I ca whose name I can't pronounce. You can do it! Ruchi saw a chance to strike what would be the final blow. But Shinime refused to give in. With its last ounce of strength, the majestic wolf gazed heavenward and unleashed a mighty howl. Suddenly, the black clouds overhead dissipated. The light from above glistened off Nagi's sword as a beacon of hope. That's a very pretty moon. I like it. Guided by his sword, Negi, who had been taking shelter in the shadows, stood proudly to face his adversary, challenging all his channeling all his strength into his sacred his scarred and battered arms. He leaped ferociously towards Arachi, his sword poised high. The golden sword danced in his hands, like a puppet on a string. One by one, Orochi's fearsome heads separated from their owner. Oh goody, did he kill it? Or did they? Did more heads grow in their place? Orochi's broken body collapsed in a lake of its own blood. Well, that's rather graphic. It's a good thing these pictures aren't quite so graphic. Otherwise, this game wouldn't have its... What is the rating of this game? I don't remember. Probably PG, at least. In that instant, the curse that plagued the villagers was lifted. As the battle subsided, the sun shone once again in the sky. Shinnibedude had succumbed to Uruchi's poison and struggled to breathe. Nagi scooped the beast into his arms and returned to Kabiki. When they reached the village, Shin Shiminimu was no longer moving. The village elder gently stroked the wolf's head. In response, Shiminimu let out a hoarse and pitiful bark, then closed its eyes and drifted off as if into slumber. Oh, It's always worse when the dog dies. Why couldn't the guy die? I mean, like a proper honourable death, but... Like, why couldn't it have been him instead? Peace had at last returned to Kamiki village. In honor of Shirinunami's epic, uh, heroic exploits, the villagers erected a shrine and placed a statue of the wolf within it. That's nice of them. Nagi's sword was christened Tino oh, Jesus and placed inside the moon cave. The villagers all looked forward to an age of endless peace. But alas, it could not be. Ah, I knew it was coming. However, this is not the end of the story. There is more to this tale than most people know. One hundred years had passed since Nagi and Shinonimu's heroic exploits. It happened so quickly that no one in the village even took notice. Oh my, what's happened? The world suddenly has colour. Oh, God. 
Uh oh. Who are you? Is this the legendary sword? Is this... Oh god. The sword that banished the dreaded Orochi? Hmm. No, it couldn't be. It's just a legend. Nothing but a fairy tale. Oh shit. Uh. Sorry. <laughs> Run away! Tactical retreat! You know, they really should put warnings on these things. Actually, they probably did. He just probably ignored them. Oh, he who seeks power. He who has broken my bonds. Speak the words. I wish darkness into the world. Utter that prayer unto me and unleash my power. Uh, no? <laughs> Run away! Uh oh, the controller's vibrating. That's how you know it's serious. Run away! Was that his scream? Uh... Oh dear. Why'd you burn the trees? They were lovely trees. Oh no! Remember kids, only you can prevent forest fires by not picking up legendary swords that are holding evil demon dragon things in them. Keep that in mind. A horrible tragedy suddenly swept over the land. However, there was one village that seemed to escape the terrible curse. The tiny settlement of Kumiki village enjoyed the protection of a sacred tree. It is here that the real story begins. Oh my. I don't know why, but this reminds me of the beginning of, um... Oh, hello. Well, aren't you a fascinating creature? Wood Sprite Sequoia. How troublesome. This is just like the ancient prophecy of doom. Bit on the nose, isn't it? <laughs> ancient prophecy of doom? Why is there never an ancient prophecy of, I don't know, cookies? I like cookies. What has transpired to bring about such calamity? We must act quickly. There is no time to lose. My power has diminished over the years I've spent protecting this area. I don't have much time left in this world. Oh no. Am... Am a Tarasu. Now is the time. I don't... I, I have trouble reading these names. I'm sorry. We have never needed your power more. Shine your divine light upon this broken, polluted world. Let your heavenly rays become our hope as you guide us all. Oh goody, I'm awake! Oh my gosh, that's... That is both adorable and awesome. Ah, such divine white light, such beauty and grace. The only one capable of such wondrous spectacle is none other than our mother and the origin of all that is, Amaterasu. I think I pronounced that okay. How delightful to see the savior whose brave sacrifice sealed away the evil demon so many years ago has not changed one bit. Seeing you emerge after so many years spent as a statue brings happiness to my heart. Sniff. <sighs> Nap time. Amaterasu? <laughs> Gaze above you and take in the condition of the sky. Since your untimely departure from our mists, the world has succumbed to devious and vicious beasts. 
They have ravaged our fine and bountiful country of Nip Nippon. That's a nice name, actually. I like that. Nippon. But never have the circumstances been worse than they are at this very moment. Please use your powers to banish the darkness and punish those who would do us harm. Hmm. Yeah? What is this? Has something, has something stolen its way into my robe? Ho, ho, ho. Oh, he, he, he. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, that's a creepy laugh. Please stop. <laughs> oh. What are you doing there, you little pervert? Phew, what on earth? You again. What the heck is that thing? Ow, 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 ow. Are you nuts? <clears throat> Hang on. Boy, for a little thing, you sure make a big fuss. I was just trying to make the conversation a bit more interesting, that's all. Where were you? Were you napping in my clothes again, Bug? Bug? I told you. I'm a thousand. I've told you a thousand times not to call me that. I am a wandering artist. The name's Isun. Wandering artist Isun. Hello, little one. <laughs> I'll show you just how great I am, and it won't be long till you're bowing before my great brush. Oh, thanks. I mean, it's quite nice. Well, what do you think? Even cuter than the real thing, no? Uh, you probably don't want to say that in front of her. What's with you, Furball? You look kind of down in the dumps. Actually, you look kind of familiar. Got it, you look just like that statue of that one. Nom. Whoa, what do you think you're doing? You crazy. A handsome girl like me should never be covered in wolf slobber. You'll regret messing with the greatest son. Don't make me use my prized sword to, to burn it against you. Was that him and his sword or was that something else? What's that growling sound? And why is it so dark anyway? Oh, great god, Amaterasu! I've used all the power I have to protect Kamiki Village. The village lives on. Their spirits lie encased in my fruit. Hmm. Okay. Phrasing, perhaps. Cut it free, and the village will be reborn. I trust in you. I know that you will lead us down the right path. Only your awesome power can restore life to the world. The trees, the trees return to normal, huh? That Sakuya girl sure has some weird stuff. The villagers' spirits are being kept inside the fruit. That's the fruit that girl said about, said that if you cut it down, the village will be restored. But it's awfully high up there. If you don't use some kind of special power, there's no way you're going to reach it. This darkness is really getting to me too. A lot can happen while you're taking a nap. That it can. I once had a nap. I woke up absolutely fine. Nothing changed. But I'm just going to have to take your word for it. Anyway, I'm going to continue on to the actual gameplay. I'm sorry this entire episode has just been story. But I'll get on to the actual gameplay in the next episode. Bye bye <laughs>